Good morning. And welcome to the officials from the Ministry of Finance, Investments Division, the Ministry of Trade and Industry, the Trinidad and Tobago Creative Industries Company Limited, Creative TT, as well as members of the media and the public. The Committee on Public Accounts, or I should repeat, the committee that deals with public accounts and enterprises has a mandate to consider and report to the House on the following. One, the audited accounts, balance sheets, and other financial statements of all enterprises that are owned or controlled by or on behalf of the state. Two, the Auditor General's report on any such accounts, balance sheets, and other financial statements. And finally, whether policy is carried out efficiently, effectively, and economically and whether expenditure conforms to the authority which governs it. The purpose of this meeting of the Public Accounts Enterprises Committee is to examine the audited accounts, balance sheets, and other financial statements of the Trinidad and Tobago Creative Industries Company Limited for the years 2014 and 2015. The committee is desirous of hearing about the various challenges being faced by the key stakeholders at the Creative TT in an attempt to determine some of the possible solutions to these challenges. The role of our committee is to help the Creative TT improve its delivery of services in an efficient, effective, and economic manner. May I advise that this meeting is being held in public and is being broadcast live on the Parliament's Channel 11 and Radio 105.5 FM and Parliament's YouTube channel, Pal View. Viewers and listeners can send their comments related to today's topic through email, that is our email, pal101 at ttparliament.org, facebook.com slash ttparliament, twitter at ttparliament. May I at this time introduce or have the, the members of the following committee introduce themselves. First of all, I would like to invite officials from the Investments Division to introduce themselves, to be followed by officials of the Ministry of Trade and Industry, to be followed by Creative T and T in that order. So can I invite the Ministry of Finance Investments Division. Good morning. Jennifer Lutchman, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Investments Division, Ministry of Finance. Good morning, all. I am Chintamani Suku, Acting Director, Investments Division, Ministry of Finance. 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Kimberly Pascal, Acting Business Analyst, Investments Division, Ministry of Finance. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Frances Senori, Acting Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Trade and Industry. Good morning, everyone. Randall Karim, the Director of Policy and Strategy, Ministry of Trade and Industry. Good morning, Dennis Scott, Senior Business Analyst. Good morning, members of the committee, Mr. Chair. Um, um, my name is Calvin Bijou. I'm Chairman of Creative TT. Good morning, all. Dion McNichol Stevenson, Director, Creative TT. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, mem members of the committee. Mr. Raj Kavir Singh, Director of Creative TT. Good morning, everyone. Gina Otley, Corporate Secretary, Creative TT. Good morning, everyone. Antonio Maharaj, Acting Finance Manager, Creative TT. Good morning, everyone. Melissa Jimenez, General Manager, Music TT. Good morning, everyone. This is Lisa Marie Daniel, General Manager, Fashion TT. Good morning, all. Diane Lewis O'Neill, HR Manager, Creative TT. Good morning, everyone. Susan Singh Sirata, <coughs> Ministry of Trade and Industry. Hi, good morning, everyone. Mario Romani from the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Good morning, everyone. Hema Sharma, Acting Senior Project Analyst, Ministry of Trade and Industry. Well, thank you very much at this time. I would like to invite our members to introduce themselves. I may start with myself. My name is Wade Mark, Chairman. I'll now ask my colleague, on my far right, uh, um, Mr. Hines, Mr. Hines, your mic. Thank you very much. Good morning, all. Fitzgerald Hines, member. Good morning, welcome. Tim Gopi Singh, member, vice chair. Good morning and welcome. I'm Rita Deunarain, member. Yes, thank you all. We have with us this morning our two able Secretaries, Mrs. Skiba, Ms. Skiba Jacob, and Ms. Heba Bagalu, and also Ms. Vienna Jaiki Pusad with us this morning. At this time, may I invite the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Trade and Industry to make a brief. Sorry about that. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I wish to thank you on behalf of the Ministry on Trade and Industry for affording us the opportunity to be part of today's deliberations of the Public Accounts Enterprises Committee, um, specifically uh, in terms of examining the accounts, balance sheets, and other financial statements of the Trinidad and Tobago Creative Industries Limited for the financial years 2014 to 2015. The mandate of the Ministry of Trade and Industry includes expansion of non-energy exports to facilitate and attract investment, as well as to support the development of globally competitive businesses to contribute to sustainable growth and diversification of the economy. In respect of the Ministry's strategic plan for the period 2016 to 2020, this is guided by the official policy framework of the Government of Trinidad and Tobago and the National Development Strategy 2016 to 2030, more commonly referred to as Vision 2030. And the theme four of Vision 2030, building globally competitive businesses, the creative industry sector has been identified as one providing numerous opportunities for expansion and achieving global competitiveness, and consequently has been prioritized for support to ensure that firms produce high value products and services that can compete in, in export markets. Uh, while the committee is looking at the period 2014-2015, we reflected that in a December 2015 report, UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, remarked that the cultural and creative industries are major drivers of the economies of developing countries and among the most rapidly growing sectors worldwide, influencing job creation, income generation, and export earnings. The creative economy 
Outlook 2018 by the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development reported that the size of the global market for the cultural and creative goods has more than doubled over recent years, having increased from U.S. $208 billion in 2002 to $509 billion in 2015, with developing countries performing positively in the global market. As such, the Trinidad Tobago Creative Industries Limited is uh, mandated to stimulate and facilitate the strategic business development and export activities of these specific sectors. And we are looking forward to the recommendations coming out of this committee that would serve to improve the operations of the Trinidad Tobago Creative Industries Company Limited, a wholly owned state enterprise under the purview of the Ministry of Trade and Industry, charged with overseeing the operations of music, film, and fashion through its subsidiary companies, Music TT, Fashion TT, and Film TT. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, thank you very much. And may I now invite the Chairman of Creative TT to make a few opening remarks. Thank you very much for the... Good morning again, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, I am Calvin Bijou, Chairman of Creative TT which, uh, as you may know, is a wholly owned state enterprise and the parent company of three subsidiaries, Music, Film, and Fashion TT, uh, which falls under the line Ministry of Ministry of Trade and Industry. Our mandate, as espoused by our PS, uh, is to stimulate and facilitate the business development and export activities of the creative industries in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, just by way of sharing, um, as chairman for this board, we assumed the governance mandate in November of 2016. Um, and part of our first mandate, of course, was to ensure that we brought the audited financials, which are before us, 2014 and 2015, um, to this August committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. You may, you may just switch off that mic. Thank you. Um, may I ask the chairman if you can provide this committee with the allocation or subvention by the government and people of Trinidad and Tobago to Creative TT for the period 2016? 2017, 2018, and 2019, respectively. Um, Mr. Chair, with your permission, would it be okay for me to deflect that to the finance manager? Yes, no problem. Good morning, all. Uh, for the period 2016 to 2018, approx approximately around 60 million would have been um, broken down into 7 million recurrent per year and 4 million PSIP for two years and 8 million PSIP for one year. No. Well, what I've asked on behalf of the committee, what was your total allocation for the year 2016 recurrent PSIP, total figure, 2016? Same for 2017, same for 2018, and for this financial fiscal year. 16 million in 2016, around 14 million in 2017, and allocation for 2018, eight, so around 17 million, and allocation for 2019, 10, 14 million. Thank you. Can I direct this question to the chairman? Can you explain to this committee, I know that you came, as you said, in November of 2016, and we are very happy to know that we have in our possession the annual audited, audited financial statements for 2014 and 15, respectively. Can you share and inform this committee, when will the parliament be provided with the annual financial audited statements for 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019? 
Well, I shouldn't say 2019. Right. Because we are still in 2019. <laughs> yes. Uh, so 2016, 2017, 2017, 2018. Well, we're very happy to report that uh, 2016 has already gone before the, audited, uh, the auditors, and we intend to have that AGM in May uh, for 2016. And for the fiscal periods 2017 and 2018, again, we're happy to report that we have submitted management accounts, and we're hoping to close that exercise by June latest of 2019. So we intend to have up to 2018 in terms of our fiscal period, those audited financials well in hand. Okay. Can you indicate to this committee what is the relationship between your company, Creative TT, and the investment division of the Ministry of Finance in terms of your responsibilities in providing that division with a number of important documents on a regular basis so that they would be aware of activities surrounding Creative TT. Certainly. Um, part of the governance process uh, starts from a monthly um, set of reports, which of course would be given in terms of the details regarding the PSIP, um, cash, back, bank reconciliations, etc. So there's a slew of financial reports which, in terms of the monthly rigor, is in fact given to the Ministry of Finance. Yes, what about your minutes? Your, your oh, and the minutes, of course. Uh, just in total, in terms of the governance structure, that is submitted on a monthly basis. Um, I think it's submitted not later than 25 days later than the, preced the period of, from which, uh, of the next board meeting. So that, too, is part of the um, uh, governance structure pertaining to the reports. Can I ask Mr. Jennifer Lutchman, Deputy Permanent Secretary in that Ministry of Finance? in the Ministry of Finance to inform this committee whether this company, Creative TT, has been compliant in providing all the necessary documentation as mandated under the State Enterprises Performance Manual. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to confirm that um, Creative TT has been providing um, the requisite reports to us on a regular basis. Um, they have been providing audited, um, sorry, their board minutes, which we have been reviewing. And um, we have been in communication with the company and um, any correspondence we send to them, they respond forthwith. Very happy to hear this. This is very good. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I ask if you can share with this committee some of the accomplishments and constraints of Creative TT. In a nutshell, of and course. then you may commit to pen and paper and submit a more comprehensive response. But could, could you give us a brief summary of some of Creative TT accomplishments, as well as share with us some of your constraints? Certainly, Mr. Chair. Um, a high-level summary of our accomplishments, um, and just to keep in focus that, of course, Creative TT is the parent company of its three, three subsidiaries, music, film, and fashion. Um, very early in our tenure, we ensured that there were three very robust strategic plans for the subsidiaries because we are, in fact, guided by a very strong strategic organizational framework in the execution of our initiatives. So all three companies, in fact, have um, very uh, robust strategic plans, just to elaborate. Um, fashion, TT, is perhaps more considerably advanced. We had the, that, those strategic plans were done by a company called Syntegra. Um, music, TT, actually, we would have had Sound Diplomacy, which is a consultant out of London, who helped us in pro professional collaboration of those plans. And Film TT, a company again out of London, P.S. Oldsburg, who helped us in the development of the Film uh, TT strategy. Um, so, so at a high level, ensuring that we had a very strong strategic rubric uh, within which to operationalize our initiatives would in fact have been, a, I, I think, one of our key accomplishments. Um, in addition to that, um, very early upon in our governance uh, tenure, 
We embarked uh, in April on what I consider to be a rationalization and amalgamation um, paper, which is before the line ministry, uh, because early recognition in terms of the economic reality of us as a country, uh, we recognized that there were certain practices um, or procedures which, of course, were not very cost effective or cost efficient. Um, inherent in that would have been even the very uh, profile of having a parent company and three subsidiaries. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I think that that early organization structure called for 69 people. We have been operating with 21 uh, persons. Um, I'll get to some of the deficiencies after. But even very early in the game, we recognized that there was an opportunity, given the downsizing in terms of our revenue as a country, to garner greater operational efficiency in having a more lean type of enterprise. So these strategic plans and a rationalization and amalgamation um, uh, uh, paper would have been put forward. We also incorporated greater rigor in terms of our governance structure um, among the boards. We simultaneously reduced the size of the boards of the subsidiary companies because if memory serves me right, I think prior to our assumption of our mandate, uh, some of those subsidiary boards had as many as seven directors, six, yeah, thank you, uh, Corporate Secretary. Um, we reduced that to three um, in an effort for reasons which are obvious um, to reduce uh, board and director's fees. And we, uh, we were lucky by a process of attrition, I would say, to have our own board um, a few months early in its tenure be reduced from 10 to seven. So we have embarked on strategic operations. We've embarked on uh, cost reductions and lean mean um, operational efficiency. Those are some of the challenges I would say to date from a governance perspective. Independently, within uh, the subsidiaries, um, Fashion TT continues, in my mind, to have tremendous strategic alignment to the value that it is adding to our country, more so because we have partnered with um, Fashion Institute and, uh, and Technology out of New York, and more specifically in association with uh, Professor Vincent Kwan, and we have created a value chain investment program, which we're happy to say uh, has matriculated a lot of our designers from being green hornets in design right up now to being able to be ready in terms of what we call the global value chain investment program. And that simply means that we have matriculated those designers whom we have benchmarked from, among other things, not being operationally efficient, not necessarily achieving their revenue targets. And we're happy to say that uh, two and a half years, three years later, six of those designers are proudly able now to be able to super achieve on their targets, see greater operational efficiency, we have crafted a very unique value proposition around the type of design products that they have, which stands the test now of international scrutiny. And some of them, uh, as a matter of fact, are now proudly boasting of being able to go into the CARICOM markets and even some of the extra regional markets. So those are some of music and fashion. Um, uh, music is probably the latest kid on the block. So our accomplishments there to date have not been as robust as we would like, but that is a work in progress. Whereas with regard to film, um, I think it is safe for us to say that we are now in a position and have attracted, even over the last six months, 10 uh, production crews, um, which have given us, and we're very strong on metrics and making sure that we seek to capture uh, the return on the investment. 10 production, film productions, who to date have yielded in the vicinity of about $10 million in terms of spend. And this ranges from hotel nights, um, the local crews that they have been able to attract, et cetera. So we see rich potential in terms of what we are about. All right, well, I have a number of questions I want to raise. Certainly. I'll ask Amrita, do you, do you know what? You'd like to raise a few questions? I'll ask you to do that at this time. Thank you, Chair. Good morning. Mr. Chair, I'm looking at page 22 and 23, also 24 of your submission, where you gave us um, a little bit of description of the projects that Creative TT would have undergone over 2015 to 2018. Right. Now, these are 
a lot of projects. Yeah. Um, um, now, I see that there are three projects that ended up costing more than originally estimated. Could you give us some details? Um, could to... you specifically identify which projects those are, please? Yes. So in 2014, we have Decibel 2014. In 2016, we have Fashion TT Capacity Building Workshop. Mm -hmm. And then in 2018, we have Value Chain Investment Program. Uh, and you're seeking to get an appreciation as to the variance um, from actual to spend? Yes. All right. So with regard to 2014, which, of course, uh, preceded uh, our tenure, I'm going to ask my finance person to give a little bit of elaboration there, if that's okay. Yeah. Hello. Good morning. Yes. All right. For the fashion entity capacity building workshop, what happened in that particular line item the money was allocated from one project to another following proper approval from the board and the Ministry of Trade in the, in the amount of 47472 And the same goes with Value Chain Investment Program in the amount of 100544 100, Um, now, a lot of these projects here, almost eight to, eight to ten projects, their cost, their actual cost, ended up being less than 50, sometimes less than 50% of what they were originally estimated to be. Is it that these, is, is this an indicator of operational efficiency, or is it an indicator that the initial objectives of the projects were not met, or all the deliverables outlined initially were not achieved. I would ask if you could probably point, because part of it is a time lag in terms of not knowing what happened before I assumed uh, chairmanship rule in November 2016. So if perhaps you can speak to which ones in particular you see in the wider variances, please. Sure. So we have writing and production workshop in 2015. It was originally estimated to be 416,000 and then it ended up being 225,000. All right, um, again, I'm going to ask the finance because that these um, initiatives preceded when I assumed office. So I'm going to ask the finance person to give an account for that, please. Okay. In the event of saving time, um, I, I could um, submit this in writing Certainly. and ask you all to submit Certainly. it to us in yeah. writing because it's almost 10 projects. Yeah. But I'm unable to speak to it with any authority because, as I say, it was before I assumed the office. Okay. Certainly. Uh, I'm going on to page 43 of your submissions. And under question three, you indicated that one of the challenges experienced was, uh, no, not one of the challenges, sorry. You, you indicated that you all work in tandem with sister companies, Export TT and Invest TT. Uh, can you explain how you all collaborate with these two entities? Um, to be very specific, this is something that started happening till end of uh, last year. Um, and perhaps I should explain the philosophy. I believe that if we are to promote creative TT, um, then part of what we should be doing is in tandem uh, with regard to say Ministry of Tourism and some of the other agencies fall under one coherent brand. So that if it is that we're promoting our musicians, our designers, etc that we have greater collaboration and greater efficiency of spend in terms of when we are seeking to promote and market TT. So it has begun, um, but primarily, we, I'm not aware of any specific initiative. It is just a dialogue in a way to make sure that when we present Trinidad and Tobago, a brand TT, then our musicians, our creatives, our film people are actually coming under the umbrella of brand TT. So that's where the interagency collaboration is intended to benefit us. Now, 
Are you in a position to indicate the foreign exchange earning potential of the company? No, I, I can't with empiricism, empiricism speak to it. I can say, however, that it is what we have started to do, certainly over the last two years, would be to ensure that we have greater metrics when it is that we are doing any type of investment so that we get greater rigor around measuring the return on investments. We do have a goal, um, and it may be, some may say, a noble goal uh, in terms of our diversification, to ensure that we can at least start to contribute at least 2% and incrementals maybe a further 2% over a period of time towards diversification uh, of the national GDP. But as yet, we are challenged as well with some of the data that we get to ensure that the fruits of what we're investing in, we are able to determine uh, more precisely what the return is. Okay, so during the period 2014 to 2018, no foreign exchange was earned? We would have earned foreign exchange, uh, and this is not subject to empiricism because I can't validate it. But for example, over the last six months, the 10 film crews that came in, okay, for example, and, and therefore I'm saying this based more on anecdotal than I can uh, empiricism, would have expended for hotel stay, uh, transportation, meals, etc., hiring. But we are not fully in a position to be able to say if that was a million U.S. dollars or two million U.S. because gathering types of those receipts are not something that we can get from our central statistical office at this point in time. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much, Chair. Welcome, a special welcome to all of you in this important aspect of Trinidad's economy. Thank you. Um, the Permanent Secretary indicated that um, part of the overall focus of, of um, Creative TT has, or has, has been and will continue to be to attract investment, increase the economy. And uh, you just mentioned the need for increasing your part or improving your part towards in increasing the GDP by this industry. Um, the first issue is, you mentioned the strategic goals, a strategic plan. Part of the submission, I believe, is do you have a strategic plan at the moment and from what year to what year? We do not have a strategic plan for the parent company, sir, but we do have three strategic plans for the subsidiary companies music, film, and fashion. Um, fashion uh, runs from 2016 to 2020. Um, film uh, was approved last year, so that runs from 2017 to, to 2022. And for uh, music, um, similar period, 2017 to 2022. So those are the periods for the three subsidiaries. OK, well, I appreciate. You mentioned earlier on in your preliminary statements that there is a quest for bringing all three under one umbrella. How purposeful are you in moving forward with that thought process and why you want to have, give us a justification for your thinking and bringing all these three together under one umbrella, but isn't it under the umbrella of Creative TT already? And, uh, Guess give us some thought on these issues. Uh, yes, uh, certainly, Mr. Vice Chair. When I look at the org structure uh, or the org profile of a parent company and three subsidiaries, a key example is when we have to have audited financials done. The cost of having audited financials are per company, and that is in the vicinity of about $200,000. For the parent company really is an enabler of the three subsidiaries. So for me, uh, greater operational efficiency can be determined if we rationalize or amalgamate it into one, because then we'd be saving almost a million dollars per annum in terms of audit fees, not to mention some of the fees that I believe would need to come out of publication of the financials once they're done, which I believe, uh, I'm not very intimate with it, I believe it is part of what may be gazetted, that you have to publish these uh, financials. So just the cost 
And the audit uh, cost of doing uh, this exercise could very well save us in the vicinity of about 1.2 to 1.5 million dollars. But in terms of our strategic focus to enable the development of the creative industries in Trinidad for export yes. and for improving um, the, the economy, adding to the economy, as they are in separate silos, if you bring it under one, would that be disturbing the thrust no, forward? No, So, As a matter of fact, I, I dare say I think it would make it far more efficient and perhaps effective. Um, yes, as it, yes. as yes. it is technically right now, it's really Chinese walls in terms of the way that the comp how the companies are um, uh, incorporated that really divides us. But in practical terms, we are working as one company. And are you going to make any recommendation to your, the authorities based on your thinking and your... Well, as was mentioned, uh, rationalization and amalgamation paper is currently before the line ministry mm -hmm. awaiting their consideration. Okay, just a few more. Um, your subventions of 16 million in 2016 and up to about 14 million in 2019 2017 was 14. What percentage of that goes to salaries and, uh, and how much go to development processes? Okay, um, my understanding is of course, the, there are two elements of it. One is the public sector investment program, the PCS, PSIP, mm -hmm. which is, uh, gets a, a different line of vote, if that is the correct use of language. The, the recurrent expenditure is in the vicinity of about 535,000. And that's the lion's share in terms of between the salaries for the staff, utilities, rent, and of course board fees. So pretty much that's the arithmetic around it. 539,000? 535,000 in that vicinity per month. Per, per month. Per month. Per month. So that's about 6.3 million per That's about 6.3 million. million per year. And that's across uh, all four, four companies. And the rest is utilized for on what is areas? Well, the rest is uh, inside of what the PSIP for, for execution of the particular strategic initiatives. Those fund the strategic initiatives. So that's a separate vote that you have? That's a separate vote. Honor. How many jobs have you been able to create from your analysis? Because part of it is to create jobs and train people for the relevant yes. expertise development. Yeah. Um, first of all, just how many jobs basically have you created over the period, let's say, for the last three years? I, I'm unable to quantify how many jobs we have been able to create. What I can add, however, is that based on the type of uh, building capacity in our creatives, for example, again, in the fashion TT um, aspect, we have seen where um, some of our designers have become far more independent autonomously and are doing a lot better, notwithstanding the challenges in the economy in terms of surpassing. So we may not have been, uh, uh, we may not have been great thus far in, in, in adding new jobs, but we certainly have created greater sustainability and economic independence amongst those creatives who have adhered to the uh, capacity building that we're doing. If I may, um, well, tremendous work going on. But, but uh, the, the issue is um, how many would you say that you have developed within the various areas of the expertise that you think can withstand the test of international scrutiny as an international fashion designer, <coughs> A music, a music person with international capabilities and so on, and the film industry. Okay, so I'm going to answer specifically to fashion. For example, um, and, and then speak to the others. For example, we, through our stakeholder engagement, we now have 200 interested people who are actually willing to come on board the value chain investment program. That, just uh, to explain, um, really is a sort of like, if you think of it as a pyramid, there are people who say they are designers, but when we stress test them against the international panels we bring in, they may be able to do a design, but they don't know operational efficiency, they don't know marketing, they don't know how many widgets they have sold, etc. This pro the program that we're doing here actually has been able to help matriculate more people now into that. And at the top of the pyramid, this is where we see the best of them now being able to hold their own in terms of some of the international orders that they are receiving. Film, film I can't you speak. Think you could be a quantification as to how many personnel organizations that 
have benefited we, from your we now have six we now have six key designers six key designers who are the top of the pyramid coming out of the 200 and 230 odd who would have responded at the base of the pyramid who have matriculated based on the standards for Fashion Institute of Technology which is of course international from from New York in terms of being able to now be exportable so we can now boast that the aesthetics, the type of product, the understanding of these six core designers who are at the top, uh, many of the names probably would be known, are now truly able to hold their own on the international stage with regard to exporting as based on uh, US standards. That's good. What about the music and... and, and music, uh, in all fairness, sir, is not one at this point in time that I can speak with that type of metrics around. Uh, film. Can we, I can mm -hmm. I devil with you on that issue? Certainly. With the surfeit of talent that we have available in Trinidad in the music industry, how is it that your organization? I'm getting the feeling have been unable to capture and export that talent that is raw and innate in our culture in Trinidad in all aspects of the cultural activities. Why is it presenting a difficulty for you to bring that talent to the, so that they can get the accreditation the same way that the fashion is getting right. it? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, music perhaps finds itself in a far more complex space. Um, and the reason for that is uh, a lot of the big companies, your Apple, iTunes, Spotify, et cetera, our music is still coming under world brand music. It doesn't have its own clear categorization as yet. It is something that we have been engaging uh, in early, early dialogue with Apple so that Soka, for example, can have its own category. But right now, if you're seeking to buy music online, you would not see Soka as a defined category. Global tastes and patterns to a large extent, they won't go for something that they don't know as yet. So first we have to make sure we have defined that product so people understand what soca music is separate from reggae or, or some other genre of music in an effort to be able to really boast of the export capability that we have. It's the way that people are buying music now. So they won't buy it if they don't know it outside of Trinidad and Tobago. So is there a, an issue or also of international accreditation of our musical uh, personalities as well before we can export these um, individuals or teams yeah. of musicians internationally? Yeah. There are elements of it, but not quite in the same way as if one were to buy a robe or something. Music is driven by taste patterns to a large extent. But if I'm going to buy a shirt or a dress or shoes or a handbag, I'm probably going to have a different type of discernment in terms of what I'm looking for. A lot of our musicians are export ready, but being able to help them make that breakthrough in the international market really means being able to lift brand TT and what soca means. And this is where to the earlier question where we can work perhaps with some of the other agencies to promote brand TT, its culture, its music, its food, etc., is what we are seeking to do. Are you trying to reach out to them or do they come to you and ask you how you can help or are you making an effort from within, from your organization to reach them um, and what, how is that being done with a ver wide variety of musicians that we have? What, what is Creative TT doing to harness the talent and carry them forward? Okay, I'm going to ask uh, Mike, if that's okay to answer that question. Good morning, everyone. Thanks. I'd like to just weigh in on that, um, on that issue. I think one of the challenges with our music industry and, and corralling it in the way that we've been able to manage the fashion so far is that music, our music industry is actually the longest running industry in our creative industries with over 100 years history. And they've been basically doing it on their own. And so as Music TT, um, th there would have been developed some strategies and tactics to help those who are already on their way and to help develop those who would like to be in that path line. So there is the artist development um, portfolio program, um, artist portfolio development program that is run by the music that, that is run by Music TT that seeks to lift the standard of the artists that um, that are going um, on the export route. 
and also the live music development, uh, live music district is also to showcase those persons who are um, at that level. The development programs under Music TT also uh, through the workshops which have been um, which have been collaborations with international um, practitioners as well has also helped to raise the standard of those that are engaging in or and interested in engaging in export and trade. Because also a distinction that has to be made, I think, is those that are um, engaged in the music industry for cultural purposes and those that are engaged in it for trade purposes. There is a distinction. All yeah. right. Could you, 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 would you be able to give a quantifiable estimation in your workshops and in your programs for continued development, how many have you been able to bring forward for those in those areas for your workshops and your development programs? I would at this point like to invite the general manager of Music TT to give some more specifics on those numbers, if I may. Good morning, Vice Chair. Um, I myself have only been in this position for six months. <laughs> so at this time, I would defer to submit that in writing after I've gone through the previous year's um, statistics. Okay. Uh, can I ask some, thank you. Can I ask some similar questions on the, on the, um, on the film? Um, over a period of time, we know that there are a number of uh, film, international filmmakers who have come to Trinidad and uh, we have been very successful in one or two, a few movies. How many movies have we been uh, successful in help in Trinidad's um, use, in use, use of Trinidad's talents? How many um, films have we been able to produce over the period of, let's say, last five years or so? Well, over the last five years, um, there have been several productions, but um, Film TT and Creative TT have been involved in um, direct equity investment in three films. Um, that is uh, Play the Devil, The Cutlass, and Moving Parts. We've also been able to give um, some marketing support to other films such as Green Days by the River. Many of these films are still in their, um, in their commercial um, distribution um, phase. So for instance, Play the, Devil, the Cutla Play the Devil, Cutlass, and Moving Parts are all now in the hands of international distributors and sales agents, which are seeking to get them um, screenings in um, commercial theaters, etc. internationally. Um, some of the movies are actually also available um, for on-demand viewing on Amazon, etc. And um, we would have, in th through the production rebate, films coming into Trinidad and Tobago over the period um, of its, from its, its inception, we would have uh, contributed over 15 million TT of uh, revenue that would have been generated simply from, only from film production. So only because these films were on the ground being produced was that generated. These are not, of course, revenues that come into Film TT, but that revenue, but revenue that, uh, that is generated through business, through, let's say, transport and security, catering services, hotel accommodation, um, you know, so, catering, et cetera. Or what, um, what positive um, forward-thinking initiative mm -hmm. is being used by Creative TT to attract international film makers to come to Trinidad to make, to produce some um, movies and films? And how, how do you link with the international um, organizations which have these film festivals? And where do you position Trinidad and Tobago in these international film festivals? Two, two questions. Certainly. That's an excellent question, uh, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, we have just refined what I consider to be our unique selling proposition. And this is why earlier I said that it is not confined only to us in Creative TT, but it really should be a collaboration between Ministry of Tourism, etc. because when we put brand TT out there, 
It means, think of us, and, and I hate to say it, and I don't mean it in a, a derogatory way, think of Brand Jamaica. Brand Jamaica is considered to be a holistic brand. All right, so when one thinks of the destination, you can think of the music, you can think of the culinary, etc. Uh, for example, if you happen to be in New York or even in Amsterdam, it is not uncommon to see a bus from Barbados uh, with Barbados uh, blazing across it. So therefore, destination point is first what we need to make sure that we market. To the specific question that you're asking, we have just refined our film rebate offer. All right, and it is second only in this region to Colombia. So therefore, essentially, part of it is film is big business, but people are looking to see there are many competing destinations. So therefore, the film rebate offers film producers the opportunity to get back elements in terms of what they invested. And there's a, a sort of like cor correlative measure that the more you put in, obviously, up to 35% is what you would get back, which includes like using our laborers, using our gophers, using our script directors, etc. So we have refined the rebate offer, and how we're seeking to market it now is under a new theme called Unseen and Unexpected. We've just created the, the data sites, the location sites, etc., where you can shoot in Trinidad and Tobago, and we are specifically placing them in three of the top destination points in the world, Cannes, Toronto, and in LA, because typically for us, that is where it's happening. Last year, we collaborated, which was a zero cost to us, with South America in terms of being able to get that. Because of our proximity to South America, it's very easy for us in terms of our topography to dub either as a South American country, but because we're English speaking. So in crafting the value proposition with the rebate, in making sure now that we're out in the key festivals where to a large extent there is the traffic and where there is the awareness, and we have been able to attract some of the auxiliary folks who are coming to do reality TV shows. Uh, in January, we had the Amazing Race film here, as a matter of fact, between Trinidad and Tobago. So therefore, we are getting the brand out there through our product offering, through the rebate, and more uh, specifically in terms of targeting the types of festivals which we believe will be able to attract the type of investment that we are looking for. All right, last, last two or three questions from my perspective. Um, in terms of your workshops and your training in all these three areas, how do you ensure your level of accreditation that can stand the scrutiny of international acceptability? And I'm referring to, is there any tandem between your creative TT and let's say UTT or UWI in terms of what you are offering for development and training, is there an accreditation process that the university or TT or UWI, can, you can work with them so that these entrepreneurs who be, become specialized in their own area, when on accreditation, can find employment and find opportunities internationally on their own. What accreditation are you? Are they? I am going to ask our HR manager, Diane, because as a matter of fact, we actually have some very current um, uh, information with regard to utilizing the students from the U U University of the West Indies, et cetera, with regard to some of the programs that they are doing, which we are co-facilitating. Diane? Sure. So currently, we are embarking on an initiative with UWI to have in collaboration, the cultural program and creative sector program that they have right now, five students as part of their, their term to pursue 50 to 58 hours within Creative TT so they can see the business of Creative TT, business of fashion TT, film TT, and music TT. They get a hands-on experience as to what it means to be export ready. How do you fashion these persons? Once this initiative is successful, because this is a pilot project we are currently embarking upon, we will then look at the metrics of it to determine um, moving forward, whether we can handle more students less and ensure that this is part of their learning moving forward. We are also looking at this initiative with our marketing manager. Um, once this is successful, to engage UTT, MIC, other institutions that offer these areas of education to our citizens. 
you will be able to give a little appreciation of how many students are in training at UTT and UWI in these three areas, music, film, and, um, and fashion. Uh, UTT is particularly um, focused on that, I, I understand. How many students would we have coming from them to you? And how many can you accommodate, I heard you mention Well, something. certainly, seeing that it is a pilot project, I cannot speak to how many students from UTT, but for UE, we are looking at five students coming on, on board. Um, five is a solid number that we can safely accommodate within our confines of our building and based on the subsidiaries and parent company that we have. Does your strategic plan have anything for expansion of that? And Because what we're looking at is this, um, a minuscule or a miniature aspect of what's supposed to be a macro picture. And we're still at a micro stage. Um, does your strategic plan empower, or is it empowering you to move to the larger level for ma mass production of individuals and teams in these three areas? I would like to attempt to um, respond to that question, Deputy Chair. I know, for instance, the film strategic plan, there is a tactic that involves um, partnering with the or rather to re in, reintroduce the secondary schools film program. It was um, very successful over, in, over the last five years or so in introducing secondary st um, students to the film industry, to various career paths that exist. Um, because of funding restraints, we weren't able to activate that within this last fiscal year and this fiscal year, but certainly it is one of the tactics that we hope to operationalize perhaps in phase three of the current strategic plan where the film industry is um, concerned. And I do believe that there would be um, um, similar tactics in, um, in the music strat plan as well as the fashion strat plan to ensure that there is a, there is a line, to, to a, a career path identified to ensure that we can keep bringing people into the industry and let's have say, them trained in that way. Let's say the administration decides to construct three new schools or centers in Trinidad and Tobago, north, central, south, with the specific purpose of development of the talent in these three areas and have trainers and workshop facilities and ability. What are your what would be your thinking? Because we are here to help you to make recommendations mm -hmm. for carrying your process forward. Give some thoughts on that. So, well, certainly, thank you for that. Um, and also, another agency, government agency, that we, state agency that we've been working closely with is the National Training Agency, who have been developing um, vocational qualifications because many of the lines of opportunity or, or employment in, in our industries do not fall necessarily within a profession, professional field or academic. There are many vocational um, op opportunities. Yeah, like and TVET so, and CVQs. That's right. Mm -hmm. So the CVQs have been, we have been, um, even from the predecessor, um, of which would have been Trans Tobago Entertainment Company, and Creative TT have continued, together with the subsidiaries, have continued working with NTA to continue the development of those CVQs. Um, and in tandem with or looking at um, comparing them to international standards. So for instance, um, film schools, where there's script writing, development, etc. cetera. Um, and so that process is ongoing. And, and we would say that we, would, we are welcoming any, any support in that area where that can continue. Uh, thank you all very much for answering the questions. You're welcome. Um, Mrs. Ginrani, one final question on the sign you'd like to raise. And then Senator um, the Honorable Hines. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Now, Mr. Chairman, you did indicate that in terms of the foreign exchange earning potential of Creative TT, you will aim to have at least 2% of GDP. Do you have a timeline by when you will estimate, when you will, would want to attain that 2% of GDP? 
I would have liked it, and I'm not being cheeky here, it should have been yesterday. Um, realistically, however, I'm saying at least within the next five years, because there are a couple of things which we need to do. First, we need to baseline where we are in terms of how much is really being captured. Secondly, to make sure that we have the type of reporting mechanisms to be able to determine where statistically we can capture that. So we are stymied in our efforts in terms of where we would like to, what we are doing in terms of some of these strategic initiatives. But I must admit that the data collection integrity to some extent is where we are challenged. And sadly speaking, it is outside of our purview to be able to, to just from a resourcing point of view, handle that. But that is our strategic objective, to get metrics around what the creative TT's mandate should be in terms of a quantifiable contribution to the national economy. Okay, thank you. I ask that because in five years, 2% of GDP would mean that you would expect creative TT to be earning approximately 42 million US dollars yeah. in five years. Yeah, yeah. And And at present, you still have to do a baseline study right. and then begin your, well, re-enhance or enhance your data collection yes. mechanisms. Yes. Uh, do you have a timeline as to when the baseline targets would be set? Well, we are, at this point in time, we are seeking to determine in concert with CSO how it is that they actually go about being able to get this. But just to come back to your 42 million US, um, this is the reason why the film portion of this strategy makes so much sense. And this is the reason why the rebate program, the rebate initiative is so important. If we are successful in making sure that we position Trinidad and Tobago as a film destination where people can come and do production, yes, we've been very successful in attracting uh, 10 on, and one-offs. But this is the reason why we've crafted the rebate, because if we were to get five major productions here over the next five years, chances are we could probably get in, in excess of 50 million US dollars in terms of spend, based on the average spend that those productions would do once they are films. And that is part of the strategic um, objective that we have. This is the reason why we are targeting the Cannes, the Torontos, the LAs, and this is the reason why we have crafted the unique value proposition and the rebate. And this is why we are market, about to market under unseen and unexpected what we can represent to the rest of the world. So it sounds pie in the sky, but it's not when you look at the larger ticket items in terms of the film productions. Now, my final question. You said earlier on that there were 12 film crews that came in yes. recently. Yes. Um, what, what exactly is the, like, in terms of the process on a arrival, how they go about registering, and so on? Okay, so that would, thanks for that question. That falls within the ambit of the Film Commission work of the film company. Um, so Film Commission work basically is that facilitation of incoming or on the ground productions. What we do is we help them to um, go through the processes that they need to go through. So whether that is um, helping them clear equipment that is coming in that will be returning um, whether that is getting in um, celebrities through the airport with particular security, whether that is getting ex escorts to particular um, locations for filming, etc. And coming online shortly, we will be working on a permit system which would require every um, film that is um, shooting on location, whether international or local, to obtain particular um, permits for shooting. This is one way that we can generate some revenue as well as capture data that is critical. And to do this, we have begun working with um, what, we are, what we have to our film-friendly network, which is about 22 different agencies across Trinidad and Tobago um, that, to help us to not only develop that permit system, but also to enforce. So for instance, police, fire, Coast Guard, we've already begun working closely with the Coast Guard in particular for film um, production that would have, film production that would have been taking place on the peninsula down at Chagaramas. Um, 
the Port Authority recently for um, a VH1 production, which spent approximately one million US on the ground during the carnival season. Um, we've been working closely with them as well. We're also we're keeping close connection also with the tourist um, tourism authorities and the tourism ministries um, because we do believe that. It take, well, film is one of those creatures that there are very, where many moving parts. And it takes, if, if you've ever looked at a, a credit in a film and you see how long that is, it's because it takes a lot of people to make a film happen. And it is one of the reasons why it is, um, as, as the chair referred to, it is a big ticket item. One film production at 10 million US can do us very well. Okay, chair, one more question. Um, now, these film crews that come in into Trinidad, is there like a manual with guidelines as to what they can and cannot do? Yes, we have a production guideline, a production guide, sorry, and we have recently redeveloped it, um, refreshed it, and it's also now available online at on a our website together with a locations database. So persons seeking to use Trinidad and Tobago can actually scout over 50 locations from where they are anywhere in the world, as well as an online production directory. So if you're looking for film crew to help your production get off the ground while you're in Timbuktu, it is possible. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Just to get the perspective right for the benefit of those who might be looking on us today in the national community, your role is that of a facilitator. And your critical mandate or an aspect of it is really to facilitate the development of the creative sector so that it can generate more economic activity and represent a larger part of the national economy and its growth, particularly in the context of the very necessary business of diversification. Am I correct? This requires constantly big thinking, very unusually big thinking, and unusual thinking because it is normal for us human beings to run the beaten track. You obviously will be faced with many, many serious challenges, some internal to your entity, as indeed you have, in my view, wisely recognized that your four-pound attack, creative TT and then three entities, is not going to generate the kind of efficiency and cost saving that is necessary. It's a bad example in the context of the efficiency and the growth we're talking about. So you're dealing with that internal challenge. Obviously, there are other external challenges. How do you identify them? Uh, 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 your three major issues. One I overheard a while ago, you said statistics, because you have no way of really measuring um, how you are growing. And you need support from other entities in the national community to do that. I'd like you to identify first, let's say, four of your major challenges in the context of your pursuit from creative tier and uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, member of the committee. Um, certainly, data integrity is the first, so data collection and data integrity. Um, I'll probably cite an example here, which again is not intended to be cheeky. We, we, we are embarking on the live music district, and for those of us who may not be familiar with it, the live music district is really a best practice in terms of music districts in a lot of the uh, you know first world places. Um, so we've con concluded uh, phase one, and we're actually in phase two with regard to that. And primarily what we've been doing in phase one is that we have been subsidizing the performers when they go to the Hyatt's, uh, Smokey and Bunty's, live on the RPT Avenue, et cetera. But we are viewed now with certain suspicion where even though in our observations, whenever we have those artists performing in some of those uh, private sector types, they are able to attract more uh, patrons. When we go now to say, all right, we would like to wean ourselves off of paying the subsidies such that the private sector would be able to pay for them. The first question I would ask is, to some extent, well, 
we don't have the funds. And we could say, for example, well, we did see during periods of when we have in them that more patrons appear to be there. But we are viewed to some extent with a certain suspicion regarding revenues around that. You wanted to? Yeah, just, uh, just to make a short intervention here. Subsidizing artists to perform. Yeah. How how does that really work? I mean, just for my own genuine Okay. So, uh, I'll ask my GM um, music to just give an example. Sure. So, Santa Heinz, we have. In the real a, world, how does that work? Well, for us, <laughs> we have a subsidized system in terms of whether you're a soloist, we pay X amount of dollars. If you are a duet, a trio, so we have a tiered system in terms of what we offer. It is the artist's responsibility now to say, okay, I'm going to Smokey and Bunty, and uh, Music TT is giving you this amount subsidized, it is up to them now to negotiate the rest of their time and the rest of their wages with the venues. Most of the soloists don't. Um, some of them do, but that's up to them in terms of what they consider their value for money. So, so yeah. it is, I am, so a, a company is hosting an event. Right. And the company approaches Creative TT to say, we would like an artist here and we would like you to subsidize that artist's presence at my function. I'm asking, is that how it works? Okay. No, they're all public venues, uh, Senator, and what happens is that we have gathered uh, an interest in terms of all these venues who would like to be part of the Live Music District oh, universe. Specifically about live, the yes, oh, for the Live that's, Music that's District. Fine. Continue, yeah, I'm that's sorry. what I'm saying. Yeah. So we give the seed capital so that the performing artist has some sort of like money to make sure they get to and from the venue. So if they perform for, say, 10 minutes uh, in different tiers, as my GM music just said, you are given uh, pretty much a little bit of a stipend. But beyond that, if the audience wants you to perform because you're so good in terms of it, which is the way it works internationally, all right? But we are trying to get people weaned away from the subsidies and have, therefore, the private sector collaboration in terms of you now paying the artist because you could go live and check, I want an R&B artist, I want a soul, I want a soca artist, for half an hour for the night, but we are not prepared and neither are we funded to pay for the entire cost of when it is that they are performing. So it's intended to be a private sector, public sector collaborative effort. That's where the subsidies come in. Yeah. So data integrity, yeah. um, as, as you said, to a large extent, mm -hmm. I think there's the opportunity for us at the interagency level to work far more closely because I, I say this perhaps coming out of a strategic background that you know, we do need to have greater strategic alignment. And I, I, I say this because, to a large extent, I see the role for tourism, I, I see the role certainly for export, investment, et cetera, um, to help us in the creative sector in formulating what would be our value proposition so that we are not operating from silos in terms of where it is at, not to mention that is inefficient spend as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So if we could have greater strategic coherence in terms of the proposition that we're putting forward, which speaks to destination, culture, tourism, industry, yeah. I think all wrong, that is one of the things that we're seeking to get greater um, effectiveness Operating around. Operating around here and even on my way to this room this morning, I noticed, as you might have, hundreds of persons flowing out of the belly of some ship, yes. cruise ship, and making their way into the city. Yes. Quite frankly, I worried for them. <laughs> because they're going to be going there. They will find nothing. They'll spend an hour or two, and they'll walk back to the vessel. Yeah. Um, with empty hands, yes. there's nothing to buy, yes. there's nothing yeah. there. Yeah. And this collaboration with tourism and other places, to my mind, is very critical yes. for you. Yeah. In these circumstances, and there's some space around here that was established years ago, I wonder whether you would be in that kind of collaboration whenever these vessels are... Because these people, I've noticed them since I operate around here, they leave here empty-handed. Yes. They spend nothing there because yeah. they just walk around yeah. and watch. Isn't that an opportunity? That for is you certainly an opportunity, to sir. Present and something yes, yeah. while you achieve your yeah. own agenda in terms yes. of 
Outside of the live music districts, I think it is important that when we to create a, to craft the tourism experience, particularly where we are fortunate to have these ships docking, this is something, again, at an interagency level, that there could be greater collaboration, such that the very artists whom it is that we have triaged right up there can, in fact, be performing, and so however it is. So why is that not being done, and it takes a layman like me to mention it this morning, to hear that it is not yet being done? I mean, it's just very basic to me. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, there's opportunity to certainly... Um, I, I could say that I would look forward to getting a little more funding, and therefore we'd be able to do it, because the stage these events do warrant um, getting them there and everything else. So incremental spend would help, but again, recognition of the country's wider national uh, economic situation. But again, this is why I think interagency collaboration can redound to our benefit with regard to having the type of inefficiencies that we maybe know um, up experience. So we got the data integrity piece, closer collaboration and agency. Yeah. What else you identify as your major? I would say actually those are the two neon issues, you know, the data integrity and data interagency collaboration. One of your programs I noticed here, um, and I, I, when I learned of it, I was very, very, um, I'm very, uh, I was very happy about it, was the bespoke tailoring piece. Um, what what has become of that? I know it. I recall it got started some months or so ago. Uh, could you tell the committee what that was about and what is the portents for that in terms of <coughs> achieving your your objective? Certainly. Um, uh, for those of us who may not be familiar, the bespoke tailoring program, the bespoke tailoring initiative. Um, is one that would have been undertaken and, and administered under Fashion TT. It is intended to be the parallel to the very program that we have with the Value Chain Investment Program, which is done in collaboration with Fashion Institute and Technology out of New York. Except in this instance here, we were, in my opinion, very fortunate to have the talent of Professor Ram Roop, whose international brand on Savile Row is one where he was here to um, uh, indoctrinate this program, and it was a year. Uh, it w we did this in collaboration with MIC. Um, the line ministry was, of course, MTI uh, and ourselves. And I'm going to turn over to uh, my GM fashion just to give some insight in terms of the number of students and certainly the quality of work that this program, in fact, was able to achieve. So, Lisa. Hi, everyone, again. Um, basically, 27 students would have been enrolled in this program and would have completed the program on February 28, 2019. It would have started in March 2018, so it was for a period of a year. This was a very intensive program whereby students had to work full time and even evening time to actually get through and actually learn in terms of what the key elements of ultra bespoke tailoring is. It's not normal basic tailoring here that everyone else learns in Trinidad and Tobago. What Professor Ramroop actually brought via his Savaru connection is a completely different level of technical expertise. So essentially, what I would say is that now that the students have that technical expertise that will carry them not only on a local level, regional level, and international level in terms of being able to export a premium product, what Fashion TT will do is that we will enroll those 27 students into our value chain investment program. Because as the chairman had mentioned earlier, that program is an intensive program as well in terms of teaching people who are in the creative industry what the core aspects of in terms of running a business, from business plans, from dealing with your customers, from costing and pricing. So after getting this technical skill, we are going to enroll them in this one-year program so they are better being able to run their entrepreneurship properly. And you know, I'm also pleased to say as well, a key partnership that we have within the program is one with NEDCO. So NEDCO provides the business mentoring one-on-one -on -one, depending on your developmental stage. But what they do is that once you fulfill an assessment, you will also be applicable for financing. So I would say there's a very positive future for these students, given that they have this quality technical skill. And what we will do is we'll continue to work with them in terms of pushing them further. OK, thank you very kindly for the time being, Mr. Chair. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. May I follow up on my colleague's um, 
contribution. Can you inform this committee what was the cost of the program that you just outlined in terms of Professor Ramru? And they have graduated, as you said, 27 students. What was the cost of that program, both in terms of the actual training and the actual um, fees that the professor would have extracted? or enjoyed. All right, so uh, thank you. Um, first, I'll speak to the aggregate amount. The aggregate spend over two fiscal periods amounted to 4.4 million. Um, this would have had three elements with regard to it. One, of course, would have been the fees. The second would have been outfitting what we would call uh, the, the tailoring laboratory to international standards. And the third, I think, would have related to some of the lease arrangements around uh, certain of the resources that would have been used. I'm going to ask uh, finance to give uh, more specific in terms of what that, how the 4.4 million was disaggregated. Uh, Three million went to the Savile Beast Book Tailoring Facilitator, Dr. Ramroop. 775,000 went to rental of MIC fact tailoring studio and and that, that makes up the amount for three point the actual amount is three point seven million mm -hmm. not four point one Good. thank you all right um, can you share with us so I think the lady who just spoke indicated that these students, because of the skills that they were able to at least realize, internalize, will now be able to take them internationally, regionally, and even nationally. Um, can you tell this committee whether these students um, certificates, or should I put it another way? The program, Mr. Chairman, that was executed, was that program accredited in any way, or was it, for instance, a program in which you just went through one year of rigorous training, you obtained a certificate, and that was it? Or was it accredited so I can take my certificate regionally, internationally. Can you share with us? Thank you, Mr. Chair. As it stands right now, the program has not been accredited. Okay? Um, I know that uh, conversations continue to happen with our line ministry and, of course, NTA, so I will deflect to uh, our PS uh, probably to give an update with regard to where that situation is. Yes, PS, can you share with this committee yes. what is the state of affairs? Yes, thank you much, Mr. Chairman. As we have um, recently received a report from the Ministry of Education that the process is towards the final certification for the students. That is a process that is underway. As we understand it, the last few um, students had work that was to be submitted for assessment, and that is currently, that exercise is currently underway, and we've been told that they are hoping to finish this process at the earliest opportunity. So we are hopeful that this will, in fact, be the case. But Trinidad and Tobago would have spent $3.7 million. Did a, a graduation exercise take place for this exercise, this program? Did we have an exercise involving, like a closure? Because this program has ended. Yes, were, indeed. Were certificates issued? No, certificates students? have not been issued because that process is in the final stages. But the program has ended. The program has come to an so end. So how can these students and so on, as was being advised a short while ago, take their skills locally, regionally, and internationally? Uh, what, are they going to get a letter from the Ministry of Trade and Industry, or from um, Creative TT, or combination of both, indicating, testifying 
that they have gone through this rigorous program of training, how would I, as a graduate of this exercise, be able to market my skills and attract the kind of income I would like to attract? Uh, I, Mr. Chairman, very significant um, observation. We, however, are convinced that the Ministry of Education's agencies are working assiduously so that those certificates of which you spoke will be in the hands of the participants in the in as sh short a time as possible. But can you tell us, Mr. Chairman or the Permanent Secretary, is it a normal practice for taxpayers' money to be invested in programs that do not carry, at the end of the exercise, any kind of, let's say, certification that can be used right within Trinidad and Tobago, outside of Trinidad and Tobago, whether regionally or internationally. Is that a normal practice, or is this just an exceptional circumstance, and we are waiting sometime in the future, as you said, not in, not in the distant, not in the not too distant future, we will get some kind of um, finalization of what we have gone through, that is the 27 participants. Yeah. Mr. When Chair, um, truthfully speaking, it is unfortunate that the certification process was not uh, in place at the time of what we call the showcasing ceremony. So we were very careful not to have it called a graduation ceremony because it was without accreditation. But it doesn't invalidate, of course, the type of skills transfer. And again, this may be anecdotal, but if one were to see the quality of the work that would have been showcased, it is not uncustomary sometimes in programs to, uh, to give a participatory certificate, part certificate of participation until accreditation actually is formalized. So we did not extend an accreditation certificate. That, as the PS quite rightly said, is a work in process, and we're hoping that that will be completed shortly. But a participation certificate, and it is not my understanding, it is the norm to your original question. So it is unfortunate that formal accreditation was not there. Yeah, I think Mr. Hines wanted to raise a question. I have a couple. Yeah, I'm just thinking this thing through as we discuss this very important matter. Um, you know, a lot of citizens in this country wouldn't understand what we mean by Savile Row, but Savile Row is, is regarded as the best in the world over a hundred years. How? I, I don't know, but... I understand. I spent some time in that part of the world, and I never even went to Savile Row because I understand you can get suits at phenomenal cost, custom-made, and all of these wonderful things. Uh, they are reputed as some of the best in the world, and we are very fortunate to have had the best in the world tutor 27 hours. What I think is missing here for me is that Trinidad and Tobago needs to become alive to the fact that we now have 27 persons who are now able to perform their skill at international standard. And of course, the accreditation piece is critical, but the skill transfer is already consummated. Yes. In addition to this, I mean, just to think of the potential, because we, we, use a, we consume a lot of suits in Trinidad and Tobago, both male and female. I mean, mm -hmm. it is obvious before my very eyes here today. <laughs> and for me, as a person who's been wearing suits since 1981 daily, it, 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 it really moved from the place where I could have gone to find a tailor in Barataria, Mr. Samaru, as he used to sew right. for me in the 1980s, and you can't find a tailor. So you resort to buying off the nail, and you don't look as, I don't look as well as you do <laughs> in your Savile Row. But the point is, I think we should generate some advertisement within Trinidad and Tobago. And then there's another point. There's a, you know, now that I'm considering what you do and understanding better what you do at Creative TT, um, I heard this morning on a radio program, and I felt good hearing it that two bits of music produced by a Trinidadian has been used in different films. This producer, I don't know who he is, 
some bit of his music was used in one film, and now he has the oppo- the same music was used in another film. So there's some great potential here. Do we, when the film crews come at your behest, and with the, um, uh, how you termed it a while ago, with the generous concessionary arrangement, how, you, how did you name it a while ago? The rebate program? The rebate, the very attractive rebate yes. program. That's it, might I thank you. Do we encourage them to look at those who we have trained before, whether it is in music or in fashion, so that in the film world they can make use of these skills that you would have created in the in the in, in the past. Well, that is an excellent uh, question because, and this is the reason why now we are seeking to make sure that music, film, and fashion are marketed from an integrated platform. So we're seeking to get in front of the respective market to say, listen, you may be coming here for film, but how about listening to our unique genres of music so that we're able to use it? And while you're here, of course, we're seeking to outfit people in terms of for, from the various designers. Because the music, the creative industry is really intended when, where it is working optimally to have a really integrated and seamless type of contribution in terms of the broader rubric of culture, which could encompass our food, which could encompass, uh, as I said before, design, music, film, archives, um, chronology, history of our work, etc. So yes, that is in fact what it is that we are seeking to promote um, before the film crews, etc. And I might express in my own limited way a small fear before I pass over to the chairman again. He signaled to me that we might finish around 12.15, so let me get one in. Um, you know, when you spoke about Brand Jamaica, nobody asked what that is. Mm. Somehow or the other, you kind of just feel you understand it. The Bob Marley's, yeah. and I understand they have a big picture close to the airport with Bob Marley smoking something, yes. and everybody's moving towards decriminalizing and so on. And then you think of the reggae music and that sort of thing. My fear is, as you mentioned previously, that you take some of your designers, seven of them, I think, they're now up to international standard. Um, the f- visitor here doesn't want KFC in Port of Spain. He wants something Trinbagonian. What are you doing to ensure that they don't get lost in the international pool, those seven people trying to compete with what is out there, but was able to identify or to create things uniquely Trinbagonian? or Caribbean? I think that's an excellent concern. And um, one of the things that I certainly grew from when I sat in uh, with Lisa Marie last year when we were doing, uh, seeking to get the cohort for the, uh, for, for the fashion um, value global chain, we sat in with an international panel, um, international panel. And this was as though they were aud- uh, uh, auditioning for Project Runway. When I reached the Creative TT, they had to have on their racks five designs that they did. And when you come, came into the panel, the panel was absolutely clinical. They started asking questions like, what is your design aesthetic? Why do you believe that your garment, compared to a, fab, a garment out of China or somewhere else, would be able to stand international scrutiny? So to the question that you're asking in terms of those seven top designers, they have had to stay very true to their aesthetic in terms of what it is, so that they don't end up looking like a Me Too. Because it's very easy to go to a Me Too, given our relatively small size, and being able to be lost. But all of that is part of why the value chain investment program is so much of a significant investment, because it maintains the design integrity, it maintains a certain amount of cultural DNA, which is how, if it is that we have to promote brand TT, it's not that we're looking like everybody else. That's what the program is seeking to ensure it maintains. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, may I ask what mechanisms are being established to allow Trinidad and Tobago to know and to get to know the 27 persons who have graduated. What promotional programs are being done so that people know 
you have 12, 27 persons who, are, who have these skills and therefore citizens of TNT who are desirous of accessing them can do so. How do we access these people? That's an excellent question, uh, Mr. Chair. We are creating a lookbook. Uh, a lookbook, uh, for want of a better word, is a digital uh, production which allows for someone to go in on our website, and this is how we actually plan to promote uh, the use of technology, uh, with, you know, uh, and not necessarily do it in terms of like um, print anymore. You can go in, you would be able, once we have completed this lookbook, and I'd let uh, Lisa Marie speak to it a little bit more, that would actually seek to identify and to promote these 27 um, tailors and, and I should add that not all of them actually are from Trinidad and Tobago. The, the success of the program, we're actually able to get people from as far as India who haven't had applied to London were referred to Trinidad because of the nature of Savile Row's uh, reputation. So to me, it's dual. Not only were we able to have these 27 tailors uh, or tailoresses, I don't know because I, I see women, or I don't know if women are tailors, um, graduate. My thinking is that if we are equally able, not just to put out that type of skill, but probably to promote Trinidad and Tobago as a design capital by making sure that we have a pillion strategy with these international types of affiliation, then people are coming here to be trained. When they come here, they have to take probably Caribbean airlines to come in. They have to stay in places, et cetera. They have to eat, et cetera. So the 27 tailors are actually going to be featured in this lookbook that we're putting on digitally through the website. No, your website is not well known. No, it's not, not yet. So the question here is that what other means, what other techniques would you want to suggest in the interim while you get your website properly yes. known to the nation, yeah. what are you going to do in the interim? I'm, I'm going to defer this to uh, our GM, Fashion, um, who can answer that question. Please. Well, well, yeah. And in, in doing so, if you can probably put that in writing. Just a brief, and then put it in writing first. Well, within this interim period, apart from the generation of the lookbook, what we intend to do is basically um, put a placement in three of the newspapers via an adversarial, which will be a nice spread. We will choose a strategic day, perhaps on a Thursday within one of the business papers or on a Sunday. And we have a nice spread with portraits of each of the models showcasing the tailors. What we'll do as well is that we will also have a small brief in terms of who the tailor is and how you will be able to contact the tailor. But I would like to say, though, that the lookbook is near completion, and we should basically have it done within the next two weeks. Um, given that our website is not properly known, our social media channels have a lot of reach. Um, and we will share it as well with our ministries and our networks, the business community, the banks, um, and magazines that we also work with. So, you know, I want to reassure you, we're going to have an aggressive drive on this. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Chairman, was if myself and Mr. Hines wanted to participate in that tailoring program that was hosted, would we have had to pay or was it a free arrangement once you There was a fee paid? attached, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, um, I, I stand to be corrected. Certainly for the locals, um, they paid, was it 10,000 TT dollars. For those who came extra regionally, they paid 10,000 US dollars. Just repeat that for me. For the locals, they paid 10,000 TT dollars to participate in the year-long program. Right. And if you were extra regional, you paid an international currency, 10,000 US dollars to okay. take part in it. So it was not for free. Okay. Yeah, before you, um, could, okay, we could have a couple of things. Here, the more pleased I become. <laughs> you know, this is so refreshing. So our local guys paid 10000 to get the bed. I mean, it's a small sum, all things considered, but the fact of contributing $10,000 to me is extremely significant. It tells me that they valued, they had an understanding and valued what was coming to them. Just as an aside, 
I heard you mention India a while ago. Well, Mr. Chairman, India has some of the best tailors that the world knows, and Bangladesh. And, and they produce a lot of fine material, cloth and so on too. And um, I'm very happy to know that we have this bridge. And I think we should do, we would do well to keep that bridge with India and Bangladesh in the context of this. I am really happy to hear that. Thank you very much, Brother yeah. Mr. Hines. Um, Mr. Sherman, if you can also give us a breakdown of the composition, like how many female, we own the names, how many males, and which countries they came from. You said some came from India. We don't know where they came, the rest came from. So you can put it in writing first. Okay. You don't. Okay. The, the, the chairman, is it that you are considering participating in bespoke Well, I, I want to talk to you before I do that. <laughs> um, Mr. Chairman, before, um, I want to just ask you, because we'll put it in writing, because we don't want to go too long again. We would like to ask you in, um, the following questions, and you will put it in writing for you. What mechanisms, for example, are in place to ensure transparency in the payment of the subsidies to artists that you mentioned? What mechanisms? How are persons identified to receive subsidies? Again, you put that in writing. And what categories of artists are being subsidized? Again, so you could put that in writing and submit it to us. Now, I'd like to ask the Permanent Secretary. We have been advised that a paper on the rationalization and amalgamation of the three subsidiary on the Creative TT would have been dispatched to the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Could you tell us, for instance, um, first of all, how long this paper has been in the hands of your ministry? And secondly, how soon will it be effected or approved for that particular um, organization called Creative TT. In other words, it may not be approved, it may be rejected, but at least when would a final position be communicated so that Creative TT would know where they are going in terms of their future? Could you share with us? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. The submission made by Creative TT was in fact requested by the Ministry. I think it came to us in 2017. Yeah, April 2017. Um, we have looked at it. It is still under review. Primarily one of the issues uh, that we were concerned about at the time was the, of course, you're looking to, to change a structure. You want to ensure that the number of staff members would not escalate to 69 or something, I think, is what is catered for under the current structure. Uh, but as it turns out, we're really looking at a functional entity with just 21. Uh, and we, we take on board that there have been some challenges resource-wise. Uh, some of the key areas uh, are being addressed, have continued to be addressed, notwithstanding that the ministry has not um, signed off one way or another officially on the rationalization plan. We are appreciative of the efforts and the perspectives communicated in that plan, and we are hopeful before the end of the next fiscal that that would be um, the outcome of the review would be communicated. Before the end of this fiscal? We are hopeful before the end of the fiscal. May, may I ask also um, the following? Mm -hmm. um, Madam Permanent Secretary, I am sure you are aware by now that an organization, according to my count, utilizing between 2016 and up to this year, at the end of this fiscal year, would have utilized just over $16 million in terms of its allocation, does not have 
an internal auditor does not have a unit. Now, we know it's a very small organization in the context of the numbers. I think the chairman said at this time they probably have about 21 workers in all. But the mere fact that monies are being spent, there is need for accountability and there is need for an, an individual or an office holder with a certain degree of independence so that they can monitor and report to you and through you to the external auditors and we will get proper reports coming before us. I'm not saying we are not getting proper reports. What I'm saying is that in the absence of an internal auditor, all kinds of um, activities can occur that might be unwarranted and unnecessary. So I'm asking you, as the Permanent Secretary, what steps are being taken to really address this serious deficiency at Creative TT? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I would first have to say that uh, the last time that our team was here at the PAEC, this issue resonated. Uh, in respect of Creative TT specifically, our understanding is that they are seeking to recruit someone in the position of internal auditor. And we're pleased, in fact, just your most recent minutes we received this week, and I see that that's, that decision is also recorded there. So we are comforted that this is going to be done with alacrity. We also take on board that there are other tiers of oversight that have proven to be satisfactory to date, but that this specific element is going to be addressed. And based on the observations of the previous session, we have engaged our colleagues at the Ministry of Finance, and we are also looking at um, internally with our different divisions to see how best uh, we can address this issue. There are several elements that cropped up for consideration, so are we purposefully pursuing that towards um, resolution. Thank you very much. So, Chairman, I'm particularly pleased that you made that point because we know from our experience here that one of the biggest contribution contributors to malpractices and you know and, and, and sometimes not malpractices but mistakes and oversights um, that have the same effect is that of weak systems and a surefire sign of a weak system is the absence of an internal auditor. So I'm very glad that the chairman raised that and I was about to raise before he raised that. I have noticed that in respect of your activity between 2014 and 2018, all but two of your projects remained with the, uh, went over budget. All but two went over budget. Now, if your entity is to, because I'm pleased about what I heard here today, I have no funny feelings in my Caribbean belly about what I've heard here this morning. Uh, if that has to continue, and you have to continue to make the contribution that you are intending to make in this country, you know, you have to run a very, very, very tight ship, if, even if only for the sake of being a good example to the sector that you're trying to develop. So we're going to keep an eye on that and ensure that we budget properly and carry out the projects effectively so that we wouldn't have this kind of record because this is the only thing that troubles me here this morning. And in respect of your notes that the chairman requested on our behalf um, in terms of the arrangements with the live music, music district, I would like to add in that note, I would like to see some kind of assurance that the live music district events do not result in simply a good, good lime, a good afternoon. 
I would like to see in your notes on that matter how it is designed for and how it will achieve the growth and the expansion that you pursue as a critical part of your mandate. I'm looking forward to seeing that in the notes because it could easily in Trinidad and Tobago degenerate to an evening of fun. Simpliciter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Hines. Um, Mr. Chairman of Creative TT and Madam Permanent Secretary, on behalf of this committee, I would like to strongly advise that you take immediate steps to have an internal auditor on board within the next four weeks at this very important body and organization. And we shall be writing you to that effect, and we shall be monitoring that. The second thing I'd like to ask the Creative TT to deal with, supervised by the um, Permanent Secretary, is to establish within one month a fraud policy. There is no fraud policy within the organization. You need to have that established and operationalized. That's the second thing I like to raise. The third thing I like to bring to your attention is what I consider to be the exorbitant fees involved in the establishment of strategic plans for fashion TT, music TT, and film TT. Now, I saw here in your submission where it cost us to establish a plan for fashion TT, some $846,759. For music TT, $804,000. $775, and for film TT, $892, $892,305. I find those figures to be very exorbitant. Now, I know that you have brought all of your consultants from abroad, and I'm wondering to what extent we couldn't we attract local or regional talent. And, and this is an area that we would like your organization to consider. Because you know we are in difficult times. And these sums are very, you know, they may not be large for many people, but they are very large for TNT at this time. And the last thing I'd like to raise on this matter has to do with the absence of a strategic plan for creative TNT. I have seen where you have been crying out for support, and you have only gotten, in 2017, you requested the sum of $100,000, you got 30000 Now, the question here is that, can you share with this committee what time frame along the permanent secretary would you require to ensure that Creative TT has its strategic plan in place? Because right now we don't have as a parent body to look after these subsidiary, this overarching strategic plan. Is there any time frame that you have in mind, both for you and the permanent secretary? I think your problem is that you don't have the funds to effect it. So I ask the Permanent Secretary to also come in at this time on this matter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is something that is actively being addressed by the Ministry of Trade and Industry. And we are hopeful within another week or so that we are able to secure the approval for some of the funds to 
go towards creative. That is a work in progress, but we see that time frame being within the within the next week. We are. Um, we must note that Creative last year did their due diligence. They went through, they had a tender process, and they've actually come up, as I think they, their submission indicates, with the preferred vendor. Um, so we are hoping that they can, in fact, move forward, and we're working towards that. And uh, of course, at this point, it's not possible to say definitively, but it is actively being addressed, Mr. Chairman. And could you put in writing for us? Um, what were the reasons um, for the termination of the chief executive officer? I think that was in, was that in 2014, sir, or 2015? When was this chief executive officer terminated? We have, from your submission, a chief executive officer. That would be, be 2015, Chair. 2015. Yes. Can you put in writing first the rationale or the reasons for it? And... I also would like to know whether the board that has now been reduced, according to what we have been advised by the chairman, is the monthly board of directors meeting. Minutes of those meetings, are they still being recorded for a fee? I was shocked to see in 20... Um, I, I think this is 2015, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. Yes, 2015. I am seeing where a fee of $251,000 was, was paid for the recording of minutes. I want to know who, where this came from and whether this is continuing at this so, Mr. Chair, I can assure you that that practice has long since been discontinued. Um, that again preceded this board. And the role of minute keeping uh, is that of the corporate secretary who spans the three entities. So, four, well, four, well, three subsidiaries um, and Creative TT as the parent company. Um, but that practice was certainly discontinued upon our assumption to, to, to the board. You mean, uh, Mr. Chairman, when you say recording, audio recording or somebody being paid to take notes, what was it? Corporate, corporate secretary. Say again? Members. In 2015 and before, the company had hired a, um, a corporate secretary, so they had, they had outsourced their corporate secretary functions to the board to a consultant. Um, at that time, of course, the Ministry of Trade and Industry picked up on that irregularity and, as the chairman indicated, that process ceased and now the in-house corporate secretary, um, legal counsel is providing corporate secretarial services for, for the parent company and the subsidiaries. Yes, yeah, so this two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that was the totality of the payment. Yeah, yes, yes, but it, so it would have been a monthly person? payment over a, 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 a series of months. Let's get this very clear for the benefit of the public who are listening to us. You mean a monthly payment of two hundred and fifty thousand? No, no, no. A, a monthly, monthly payment, payment totaling two hundred and fifty thousand. Yes, yes. I would like, Mr. Chairman, at your um, behest, to to request a bit of a report on that particular aspect of things. I would like to see that. Uh, just to know, this practice yes. preceded I, I appreciate this that. board I appreciate and that. this chairman. Yes, so in, in, in that little reportage on the matter, for the benefit of this committee, Certainly. I'd like to see its genesis, and I'd like to see the terms, and I'd like to see who and, and so on. I would like a comprehensive Certainly. note on that. It will oh. make for very interesting reading. Yes. Thank Maybe. you very warmly. Thank you very much, Mr. Hines. What this, the item of information technology expenses also piqued my attention and interest. Is that a practice that is still going on, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Mr. Chair, could you be more specific? I'd uh, just like to know the time and the amount. Go to page 46 of your submission. <coughs> mm -hmm. And you're looking, looking under information technology expenses. 
and looking at item number one. The internet provider? The 13,392 and... and All those things have been discontinued. Again, that preceded this board. Um, uh, and some of those practices, uh, we were able, in terms of a very early audit, to ensure that we discontinued. So, so, so that monthly fee of 56000 is no longer, no longer part of what we do. All of those things uh, were discontinued. Mr. Chairman, there are many other questions that I'd like to raise, but it is 12.31, and I wouldn't want to detain you any further. Thank you. Whatever questions we could not have put to you today, we shall communicate to you in writing. Thank you. And also to the ministry. Um, I would like to give you the opportunity at this time, first the permanent secretary, to make brief closing remarks if that is an option you like to pursue, as well as your good self, Mr. Chairman. So, Madam Permanent Secretary. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, the Ministry of Trade and Industry again wishes to express its appreciation for the views, the comments, the recommendations that have emanated from the deliberations today. And as in the past, we do take them on board and look towards resolving any issues that have been raised. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, and by extension, the committee, we just want to say thank you very much. Uh, this process has been very enriching, and we certainly look forward to the type of support uh, pledge in furtherance of our mandate. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I would like, on behalf of our committee, to extend our thanks and appreciation to officials of the Ministry of Finance Investments Division, um, officials led by the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Trade and Industry, and of course, your good self, Mr. Chairman, in the capacity as Chairman of Creative TT, and your um, officials accompanying you. We also take this opportunity to thank the viewing public, the listening public, and generally members of the media for following these proceedings this morning into this afternoon. At this point in time, if there are no further interventions, I would like to adjourn this meeting and to thank everyone for being present. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.